<clears throat> I have such a terrible singing voice that one year my teacher told me to mime during our school carol concert. <laughs> <laughs> what, was the, what was the song? What was, what was the song? I don't know. I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it, was a, it was a a range of, of Christmas carols. Oh, there was a few that you were bad at. You just you were bad, yeah. full stop. It wasn't just the yeah. one song. Oh no, no, I know you're rightly. I sang some of them like an angel. <laughs> <laughs> oh come all ye faithful, I just would scream the word shit. <laughs> so what well, did she did she say this in front of everybody? Um no. No, no, I was I was sort of taken aside. And, and said, look, you're finding this a bit difficult, aren't you? And it's, it's, put, it's, it's putting some of the other boys off. <laughs> so, truth or lie, time to decide. It's kind of too obvious and too easy, so I don't know. No, you're thinking of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lie. I think it could be just a lie. I will say lie, the team says lie, we'll, we'll lie. go with lie, yeah. OK, David? <laughs> Truth or lie? It is a lie. Oh. <laughs> it's a lie. David was not told to mime during his school carol concert because he has such a terrible singing voice. Sir. David's never been asked to keep quiet at school. <laughs> well, once. But uh, out of respect for the gym teacher's career, we won't go into that. <laughs> I've placed a £500 bet at the bookies that I'll live till I'm 100. <laughs> David's team, what do you think? Mm. <clears throat> when did you place this bet? I placed this bet when I was 18 years old. And what odds did they offer? They offered odds of a thousand to one. A thousand to one? And you, sorry, how much did you bet again? 500 pounds. So when you're 100, you stand to gain what? 47 pounds, 38 pounds. <laughs> how old are you now? I'm 41. Right, so. 500,000 pounds. How <laughs> Well done. <laughs> so you're only a couple of years younger than me. At 18, £500 is quite a lot of money back then. It was. It was Where did you get £500 from? I inherited it from my granddad, oh. who reached the age of 100. Oh. And I your, thought that would be an appropriate thing to your do. Your granddad was 100 by, before you were 18. <laughs> your dad when you're 18. <laughs> Sorry? When you were 18. <laughs> when you were 18, your grandfather was 100. Yes. yes. No. So he yes. was 82. Your grandfather was 82 when you were born. Right? Can we stop calling him Grandad and give him his proper name of Step Grandad? <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> okay. so, Just respect for the dead. He was your step grandfather. Well, yeah, you still, you still just... decided that after your grandfather died, your grandmother married a much, much older man. Well, she, she, was, she was very old. She was very old when she had my. Yeah. My well, why dad. did you, why did how, you old, decide... how old was your grandmother when she had your dad? She 71? Was about... <laughs> <laughs> she, was, she was 45 when she had my granddad. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sense, no, that man. she was 45 when she had. The maths might make sense, but why did you decide that the genes of your step granddad would be in you? <laughs> 500 pounds. That would have got you an airfare to Australia. 23 Surely years. Surely you'd have spent it on travelling or something like that. I just can't believe that Gym you would. Oh yeah, I was grieving. <laughs> <laughs> that was not the time to go flying around the world. Well, There's very... nothing more upsetting than a step grandfather <laughs> dying. <laughs> on. I'll be honest with you. We just none of us expected it. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. Ruth thinks it's a lie. Jason yeah, thinks it's a lie. Lee, is it a lie or were you actually telling us the truth? It is in fact a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, it's not true, but uh, Lee's going to feel like such an idiot if he does reach 100. Not because he didn't place the bet, but because he'll be wetting himself on a bus and telling strangers he used to be on the telly. <laughs> I, I used to put on a different voice on the telephone and pretend to be my own agent. Oh! <laughs> Let's have it, then. The voice? Yeah. Imagine I've just yeah. rung up. Hello. Okay. I'm the, uh, people that want to book Rob Brydon. Yes. <laughs> how, how much would he cost? Uh, his name, I used to call him Richard Knight. 
and Richard used to talk like this, and uh, he'd say, listen, uh, love to help you out, but at that price, we're really not going to make much movement. Um, <laughs> and I, I once did a charity gig, and... Uh, it's got... a lie. He's never done charity gigs. <laughs> <laughs> got, got money for it, because Richard said, listen, Rob's an angel, and if he knew I was doing this, he'd never forgive me, but I've got to get a bit of money, otherwise I wouldn't be doing my job. <laughs> Did you have a real agent at the time? No. <laughs> so, how many phone numbers? Do you have a separate phone number for your fake agent? No, or was it just it your normal I worked, phone? I used to work at the BBC in Cardiff. I was on the radio, I used to be a DJ. And if they got through to the office, I would then phone back under the guise. When it came right. to important meetings, did you have to, like, take a disguise? And <laughs> sit there and go, well, Rob's in the toilet at the moment, but when he gets back, I'm sure he was... <laughs> with, I'll go and get him now. <laughs> was, uh, was oh, it... I believe my agent said I could do it. <laughs> I assume you've got an agent now, so why did you decide to... Well, um, I didn't have one. Yeah, I have one now, but I, I didn't have one then. What, made, what convinced you you needed one? Because, it, it working? because it's very difficult to do your own negotiations and not come across as an horrible person when you're asking for money. But if it was Richard Knight saying, listen, I'm just doing this, Rob doesn't want money, but I've got to get money for the guy. But they didn't know it was you. That's my whole point, you I know. idiot. That's I what know. I'm saying. <laughs> did you have anybody else on your books? <laughs> What's the sort of work that, uh... Hosting things. This was back in about the late 80s when I was a local radio disc jockey. So Did the agent take a cut? <laughs> 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 Did the agent phone you to let you know they got the job? <laughs> no, I was the agent! <laughs> Did you ever fall out with your agent? <laughs> no, it was me! <laughs> When you decided that this, this charade had to finish, did you take yourself out to dinner and tell yourself you were letting yourself go? <laughs> did you sign a contract? Are you still in touch? <laughs> right, it's time to guess. Uh, first of all, Lee and those bastards. Uh, what, what, what are you going to go for? I would say true. Uh, you think it's true? Mm. You yeah. saying it's true? Yes, in the true. words of Rob Brydon, I think that's true. <laughs> Right, it's true. Um, David and these asses. Uh, what, do you, what do you say? That is so I true. Think I think it's true. It's, yeah, yeah it's, I think it's, thinks true. it's true. David May well. well. I... Let me buck the trend by telling you, it's true. <laughs> when I was six, I was thrown out of ballroom dancing lessons. <laughs> David's team. Right. <laughs> I'll take this. <laughs> <laughs> You were six. What? What? Uh, what, did, what have you done in the ballroom dance lesson? I, 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 I broke some. I broke a piece of equipment. What equipment can you break ballroom dancing? Um, I broke the machine that plays the music. The tape machine that plays the music. <laughs> what? Well, the machine that plays the music. Music from the robot. The friendly yeah. robot. The robot. What were you doing at the time? I can't remember the dance, if the truth be known. So you can't do it now for us? You're absolutely right, Ben. OK. <laughs> so, Lee, you say you couldn't do it, and under normal Kate. circumstances, but we've got a... We've got a... Oh, Craig! A I call him dancer. Okay. He can hold your hand and right. ease you into it gently. I'll show you how it went. OK. I'll show you how it went. Come right. On. Now, I'm going to say this really slowly, so listen. <laughs> I think, uh, I think I'd better lead. Now, um, it's... It's arm up, like this, you see, and basically, the uh, arm on the shoulder, the other lady, I sort of turned and then said, oh, what's that machine? <laughs> and then... <laughs> and then broke the machine. That yeah, was a rough, roughly out of the So, I... If that's not evidence... So what are you going to say? What's, what, what do you think? Truth or lie? I think it's an unusual choice, you know, for a six-year-old. For a six-year-old, six well. but it's obviously... It was a... big in the 70s, though, because of Come Dancing. Come Dancing was a big show in the 70s. Yep. Before it was bastardised. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to say? I, it's a difficult one, but I think we're saying it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie. Yeah. OK. Uh, Lee, <clears throat> truth or lie? It is, in fact, true. Oh. <laughs> It's true. Anyway. When he was anyway. six, he was thrown out of ballroom dancing lessons. Even so, he spent the next few years locked away in his bedroom perfecting the hand drive. <laughs> 
I always throw the first and last biscuit in a packet away without eating them. <laughs> Why? Because the one at the top, it started when the one at the top is crumbly, so I used to throw that, often it's got crushed, and then I don't, can't explain why the bottom one. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean you throw the bottom one away before you start eating them, or just when you get to the bottom one, you throw it away? All right, here's the packet of biscuits, OK? <laughs> Take the top off with the little, little bit of stringy kind of yeah. mm -hmm. wrapping. Which actually it. reveals sort of two or three. Two or biscuits. three come yeah. away in it in a quite yeah. a satisfying yeah. motion. Yeah. The yeah. third one is normally relatively unscathed yeah. by its experiences Which during transit. What are you talking about? I take those, let me talk. I take <laughs> them out. <laughs> Suddenly I'm on Bill Turnbull's side. Um, <laughs> I take them out. The top biscuit is often damaged. I discard it. I you then discard take... Discard it, what, throw it away? Throw it away in the bin, in yes. the bin. Waste it. Or leave it all for the dog. I'll put it on the floor in, in the kitchen. Then, at the bottom, because I'm taking them out to put them in the biscuit... Have you got a jar. dog? Yes, I have. <laughs> ben, he's not going to say no now. He's quite good at this. <laughs> I've got a black lamb. Oh, very good. Have you? So, <laughs> Where you do black experiments. <laughs> <laughs> And take the biscuits, I'm getting them out to put them into the, into the clear Perspex uh, Kellner jar, whatever it's called. If what? you're worried about biscuits getting crushed and misshapen and crumbly, why do you put them in a biscuit jar? Well, that's the that's safest place. Happens. No, it's not. A packet is like a, a car park for biscuits. It's, <laughs> it's all perfectly, isn't it? If you put them in a jar, you're going to oh, get exactly the kind of problem you're trying to avoid. You think I'm putting them in the jar like this. I give my wife the jar at one end of the room. <laughs> I then stand at the other end and go, are you ready? <laughs> That's not how I put no, them in here. You, you take them out one by one and carefully place them no, in the bottom no, of the jar no, David, like a maniac. No, David, I take them out <laughs> and I slide them into the, what, to the, to the jar and they rest happily. What biscuits are they? Uh, chocolate hobnobs or, ideally, the ones I don't have to do it with, because I only do it with the ones you take out, is the chocolate Leibniz, because they come in a, in a box. They're usually unscathed. You've just said that you give chocolate hobnobs to your dog. Chocolate is poisonous to dogs. <laughs> Have you not met his best dog? <laughs> well, now you mentioned he wasn't it a black actually. lab when we got him. <laughs> he was a golden retriever. So just to absolutely establish, you're taking out the biscuit, you're discarding it because it's crumbled. If it's not crumbled, you tend to throw it away, but not always. Then you'll slide them out like some sort of magician on your hand like that. You'll get the jar, you'll insert them in, unless it's a Leibniz, wherever the bloody hell they are. <laughs> they go in, it comes off. There's one left, it's not damaged. Give it to the dog that used to be brown that's now black. That is what you're telling us is what's happening in your house. You're mental, of course it's true. <laughs> I think that's a lie. I think it's a lie. You're going to say lie? Yeah. Uh, go on, I'll go with my team, say that's a lie. Yeah? Lie. David. Well, yes, I think I can believe it. Did, yes, yeah, I don't I like th the I broken biscuits on the end. Yeah. So what you are, are you saying? So one. we'll say true. You're true. saying true, right. Yeah. You say true, you say lie. Well, it's actually a lie. <laughs> As a child, I used to play board games against a bucket with a face painted on it. <laughs> I called this bucket <laughs> Stephen Tatlock. <laughs> wow, what games did you play? Uh, Monopoly. <laughs> um, uh, I played a game called Diplomacy. <laughs> and even then you were thinking of becoming a politician. Yeah. <laughs> no, even then. <laughs> I'm not a politician. <laughs> Um, Why Stephen Tatlock? Uh, well, it was a, basically named after a friend of mine. Who was a... Why did you play with Stephen Tatlock? <laughs> he had no hands. Stephen... <laughs> Stephen... Stephen Tatlock wasn't always there. <laughs> but after I painted the face on the bucket, he was. Did you paint the face on the bucket? I think my dad painted the face. Your on the dad bucket. was involved in this sad story. <laughs> You've decided you haven't got any friends, but lucky day for you is this is Stephen Tatlock. <laughs> what can I say? My father saw me talking to a bucket and decided to accept that side of my nature. Did your father invent Henry Hoover's afterwards? <laughs> uh, this is your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So if you were playing Monopoly, you'd have your go, and then you'd run round and pretend to be Stephen, would I you? wouldn't pretend to be Stephen, but I found I had to roll for Stephen. <laughs> and Stephen would need help moving his... <laughs> Did Stephen ever win? Yes. <laughs> What do you think, Lee? Is he, uh, is he telling the truth? What do you think? I don't know many people who have an imaginary friend with a surname. <laughs> He's one of the few. <laughs> <laughs> Did you call him Stephen Tatlock or Stephen? Did you I say, it's him. your turn, Stephen Tatlock? <laughs> <laughs> you must do it quickly or otherwise I, you'll go the way of the other buckets. <laughs> Usually. Usually I'd call him, him Stephen. Oh, you were quite friendly then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> did, did Stephen Tatlock know there was an imposter? Uh, <laughs> imposter? I call him the imposter now. I never mentioned Stephen Tatlock to Stephen Tatlock. <laughs> did, you ever, did you ever mention the real Stephen Tatlock to the bucket? <laughs> I think probably not. No, I think that would they have been... They were blissfully unaware of each other's presence. been playing with <laughs> levels of reality. I don't want you to think that I felt I was in any way being unfaithful to the real oh, Stephen yeah. <laughs> I'm not picturing this as some person. sort of romantic yeah. film. I can't imagine the real Stephen Tatler walking in on the game and you go, Stephen! <laughs> Stephen! <laughs> Stephen! Stephen! Stephen, I can explain! <laughs> so what do you think then, Lee? Time for a guess. Truth or lie? I think it's true. You think it's true? Mm. I don't know why. Well, look at David. We know why. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Holly? I think, uh I don't think it's true. I might ask my friend, Boris Dickey. <laughs> what do you think, Boris Dickey? <laughs> oh, Boris Dickey says no. It's a lie. So you're saying it's a lie? Yes. You and Boris say it's a lie. OK, Boris David. Dickey! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Boris Dickey. Uh, David, truth or lie? It is, in fact, a lie. <laughs> Yes, it was a lie. Uh, when David was a child, he didn't play board games against a bucket that he called Stephen Tatlock. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Looking forward to this. <laughs> I trained for last year's Paris Marathon, but pulled out when a doctor advised me that one of my legs is shorter than the other. <laughs> Jason, what do you think? Why did you train for the Paris Marathon? Because I couldn't get into the London Marathon. Why? Why? One leg short than the other. <laughs> because uh, it was full. What time of year is the Paris Marathon? Uh, about April. Uh, about April. But about the same time as the London Marathon, then. Lee, Are they on the same about. day? Yeah. Do they clash? How embarrassing. <laughs> so, what do you mean the London Marathon was full? It was a man dressed as a pig. He doesn't mean he's a man who's dressed as a pig that hasn't applied early. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They were good. We can't get enough people to fill this. Go up to the fields and try and rope some pigs into it. Hello, pig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we'll send one down. We'll send one down. No problem. What made you go to the doctor? Did you have an injury? Did you feel pain? What? Was... I did. I felt pain during the training, and I said, uh, "Where was the pain?" In my leg. <laughs> <laughs> Is it not possible for people who have uneven legs to get? Shoes that compensate for that. That's right. He and said he... that. He gave me that. Right. He and gave me why the. Why wasn't that fine then? When, when your leg's different, your whole body adjusts to make up for it. And it was so different. <laughs> it would have to be like a stiletto and a trainer. He said, I'll give you he said, I'll give you the thing to put in your shoe, which will help you do some regular exercise, but your marathon days are over. <laughs> okay, so David, what are you gonna say? Do you think he's telling the truth? Lie. Why? Oh, I believe it. Thank you, Miranda. Thank so, you. So, truth from Miranda, do, lie yeah. from David. I think it could be true, but I, but I think if he'd really wanted to do it, you could have done it. <laughs> I'm not, all right, I'll rephrase it, OK? I trained for last year's Paris Marathon, but pulled out when a doctor advised me that one of my legs is shorter than the other. He did say, well, actually, if you really tried hard, you could probably do it, but I'm a lazy bastard. <laughs> <laughs> true. <I'm at>. True. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you you're saying say? lie? Your team says lie. OK. Uh, Lee, are you telling the truth or are you telling us a lie? It is, in fact... True. <laughs> yes, it's true. Uh, Lee did train for last year's Paris Marathon, but pulled out when a doctor advised him that one of his legs is shorter than the other. Actually, I have uh, completely the opposite problem. One of my legs is longer than the other. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> I, of course, got a grade A degree in geography. <laughs> what did you say? Uh, you know what I said. I said it wrong. Just read it out. <laughs> For six months, 
I wrote horoscopes for a women's magazine. <laughs> there we are. Please. Right. What was the women's magazine? Got mm. him at hurdle number one. <laughs> <laughs> Top Sante. What? <laughs> what women's magazine is that? That's a, that's a magazine, isn't it? Have definitely. you heard of Top Sante? I, I, no, it's like I a have. Christmas mag. What is you it? You not heard of it? No. Never. Top Sante. Have you heard of it, Richard? No. Have you have heard, you heard of, it, of it? Oh, yes. There we are. Thank yes. goodness. We've not heard of it, have we? If you'd have said... Oh, it's not aimed at you, is it? Frankly. Well, it depends how annoying he's being. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, what, what is Top Sante? It's a sort of magazine that you see in dentists' waiting rooms. How long ago was this? I think about a year and a bit after I'd graduated. So the, bl the bleak um, years, as we call it. Was it the only contribution you made to this august publication? It, it, it was, yes. Why did they think you were the man to, to do this job? Uh, well, a, th a friend of mine... Lying. All right. <laughs> <laughs> worked for them, and um, they, they, they basically just... For 50 quid a week, they just needed, you know, some vague text that they, they wouldn't be held to, saying a, a, a period of transition is coming, but it's time not to end hope, but still to be wary. You know, that's <laughs> it. £50 a week for six months, once a week, doesn't know anything about star signs, no, nothing that would make them go, David's the man. No, because I shouldn't be doing You it. are quite articulate. They should have got a qualified charlatan, but no. <laughs> So, Lee, it's time to take a guess. Is David telling us the truth, do you think, or could this be a lie? Oh, it's a fib. He's lying. All uh, oh, right. He said it with conviction. Yes. I'm saying yeah. he's lying. What do you say? Yeah, I think he's a liar. We're so all... you're saying it's a lie. David Mitchell, truth or lie? It's a lie. Oh, it was a lie. <laughs> it was um, a humongous lie. And may I just say, in my defence, obviously I know nothing about horoscopes, but the thing that you most disbelieve, there's definitely a magazine, isn't there? Called yes. Top yes. Sante? Yes, there is. I thought I was sitting there, name a woman's magazine. I couldn't think of a thing. <laughs> one popped into my head, and frankly, I want a medal. <laughs> I think you very well. I once stole Catherine Zeta Jones's dinner money. What's well, a... of course, you're both Welsh, so you presumably went to the same school. <laughs> Applaud that, that thinly veiled racism. <laughs> what age were you? Um, I would have been um, school age, young, about, I don't know, 10. Catherine Zeta Jones is about, she's 40 odd. She's well, I'm 40 40 40 40. Yeah, she, she was younger than me at school. And, well, and, and, now, and is even younger now. <laughs> so yeah. so you, were, you were ten. You were ten. And she was about five. five. <laughs> you stole a five-year-old little girl's dinner money at the age of ten. <laughs> you bastard. No, um, I, I didn't steal it as such. It was it was a misunderstanding. <laughs> what, right. What was the misunderstanding? How did it? How did her money end up in your hand? Oh, well, I arrived at school that day, and as I walked into the school, Catherine Zeta Jones's mother saw me and said, "I've forgotten to give Catherine her dinner money. Would you give her the dinner money?" And gave the dinner money to me, and uh, I forgot to give her the money, and I spent the money on sweets. And what was this school? It was called Swansea School. Swansea? <laughs> Swansea School. Swansea School. It was called Dumbarton. Oh, not Swansea then, Dumbarton. In Swansea. Mm. Oh, right. Have you met her since? Like, on yes, the... I have, actually, yes. And have you, met, have you had a hilarious... <laughs> oh, tell time. us about when Here's you met her. Here's your free quid. I'll tell you uh, that when I, when I met her, this is true. When I met her, which is not to say... <laughs> Which is not to say. Which is not to say. The other one is true. Um, I was. I met her at the Baftas when she won for Chicago, and she had an American accent. That's the story. Oh right. So give me my three pound back, Bryden. <laughs> so what are you going to say? Truth or lie? Lie. 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 It's got to be a lie. lie. Because, you say uh, lie. You're too. Yeah. You're too an honest man not to have gone back and given it. Given it to us. So, David's team. I think it might be true. I'll go, I'll go with what Ruth says. Yeah, all right. We'll say it's true. You're saying it's true? Yeah, yeah. You say it's a lie, you say it's true. So it is true. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's true. 
I did once steal Catherine Zeta Jones's dinner money. Uh, it was a, a long time ago when we were kids. I, I now feel old age creeping up on me, as does Catherine, every morning when <laughs> Michael fancies a cuddle. <laughs> so, please welcome this week's special guest, Mark. <laughs> welcome, Mark. Uh, so, first off, Patsy, what is Mark to you? This is Mark and he is currently teaching me to swim to overcome my fear of the water. Right. Lee? <laughs> this is Mark, and he started the pub darts team that I play in, but I had to ask him to leave because he was so bad. <laughs> right, so, finally, Chris, your relationship with Mark. This is Mark. He is my next-door neighbour. He lost a bet of £200 that In The Loop would win an Oscar, so I gave him my wheelbarrow. Right, well, there we are. What could be simpler? Um, Patsy's swimming teacher, who cured her fear of water, Lee's sacked darts teammate, or Chris's neighbour, who likes a bet. David's team, where would you like to start? Um, mm. Darts. <laughs> How can anyone be bad at darts? Well, well, what sort of standard of darts yeah. playing are you expecting in this team? Two out of three darts in the board would have been good sufficient. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say to him to track him out? Patsy, can you be Mark? Yeah. <laughs> this might involve acting, but just go with it. <laughs> Mark? Yeah. That's you. Yeah, you're Mark. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know this whole darts thing? Yeah. And you keep missing the board. Mark, mm. look at me when I'm talking to you, Mark. <laughs> we don't like the fact that you keep trying to get the uh, dog drunk. And also, <laughs> we, uh, we were going to have to let you go because, unfortunately, you keep missing the board. <laughs> I cannot imagine you would I say that to him. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a chance you're going to say, listen, mate, yo, you set up the dark scene with Big Lee Max in the room, get off. <laughs> <laughs> Look, how seriously did you take this dark scene? I take darts very seriously. Do ask, you? Ask me any checkout. I, I don't know what that means. All right. <laughs> 151. Oh, well, that's, that's your classic uh, treble 20, treble 17 tops. Don't worry, that's through or not for a couple. <laughs> <laughs> right, then 164. Oh, that'll be treble 20, treble 18 bull. <laughs> I don't know how... Bull, oh, what's bull? 180. Yeah, you, you worked that <laughs> out. <laughs> he's, he's getting them right, he's getting them numbers. Is he getting the numbers right? <laughs> right. Just, right. just say yeah. 180 again, Joe. 180. <laughs> I feel like we've just engaged with foreplay. <laughs> yeah. That's I know. Oh. She's missed 180, but I'm for a good one. Wait till I get to 69. Oh. <laughs> Did he set up another team? Did he just walk away and say, I'll give up darts because Lee... He told... struggled to set up the other team, apparently, because he was going round saying, I'd like to set up a darts team. Have you had any experience? Well, I just recently left one because I was thrown out because <laughs> I was terrible. So he's not like a great singer. That's not the usual next question when somebody says, I'm thinking of setting up a darts team. Have you had any experience? You're either somebody very interested in playing a bit of recreational darts or not. Recreational You're not going to sort of go, darts. have you had much experience? I don't know, I'm a busy man. I want to play in a high-level darts team. Darts is a serious sport. <laughs> David, do you, want, do you want to move on? Yes, OK. Um, well, Chris, why did you feel the need when your next-door neighbour had bet some money on uh, a film you were involved in winning an Oscar? Why did you think you needed to make up the loss for him well, with the gift of a wheelbarrow? The, I live in a terrace house, and the houses next door to me are flats. It's a communal garden, and Mark is the only one who ever bothers to look after them. Mark's never seen the film, but he went to, to the book, he's put 200 quid on it and uh, lost it. In the conversation that we were discussing uh, this, uh, it came up that uh, he needed a wheelbarrow and, uh, and I, felt, I felt bad because he'd sort of staked it because so, it's so me. So if he just said I could do with a leg over, you'd just say, well, there's me missus. You know what I mean? I feel really bad about the bet. No, John. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> I don't so know so how things work extreme. where you live, but wheelbarrows and women are not the same thing. <laughs> where I'm from. You may well have given the wheelbarrow to assist him in clearing off the communal gardens, but surely you didn't give him the wheelbarrow as compensation for your film not winning the Oscar. I sort of intended to offer that he might borrow it. It kind of got out of hand. <laughs> OK, <laughs> now, Patsy, you, you have a fear of, of water, is that right? I did. Right. Yeah. 
What, what, have you had this all your life, or was there uh, some harrowing experience you could amuse people yeah, with? Yeah, I think so, but I didn't really know that I had it. Right. How did you not know you were scared of what surrounds us? Because um, I've always <laughs> swam. But I just. You, you had swam, a... but you didn't know you were shit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you wouldn't refuse to swim? No, I swam. So why we had you... to swim when we were kids. We just used to get put in. It was freezing cold. Don't you remember when they, the teachers used to make you get in? And that was worse then because it was freezing cold. Kids would be crying, swimming, but they did actually Christ, make you get in. Sounds like you're talking about Dunkirk. <laughs> <laughs> so you already could swim before you encountered Mark to teach you to swim? Yeah. <laughs> Right. How was your people? first lesson? When Mark said, he might, right, yeah. let's have a go at the water, and you did 20 lengths. What did he say? <laughs> yeah. I didn't do 20 lengths. So you decide you're going to have some lessons in order to improve the efficiency of, my, of your swimming, and then you get into the water and you realise, oh, my God, I hate it here. <laughs> this has been the problem. It wasn't the efficiency of my kicking and arms. It was that I hated it. <laughs> Actually, quite scared of water. That's why I don't swim very well. But you know what? I don't what breathe what did you do underwater. To help you out no, none of us fear breathe underwater. I mean, that's that's a standard human thing. No, you can breathe underwater. No, you can't. Oh. <laughs> We, uh, we, 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 we need an answer. <laughs> Lee gives every impression of knowing a bit about darts, but then I'm, I'm perhaps not the best person to scrutinise that. He knows his darts, that doesn't mean that story's true. I believe Chris, because of the wheelbarrow, or I believe Patsy, because Mark looks quite built. So what are you going to say then, David? Who are you, you going to go for? Um, I'll go with Patsy. Yeah, I go with I Patsy. Think, I think Patsy, yeah. So, you're saying Patsy's uh, swimming instructor. Mark, would you like to reveal your true identity? Oh, I am Patsy's swimming instructor, and I helped to get over her fear of water. <laughs> The, the, the first thing I want to clear up is this, this, this thing of telling her that it is possible to breathe underwater. <laughs> That's not quite true. She does very good front crawl. Really? Good breathing technique and breathes out underwater, doesn't breathe in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I've had to prise open my bedroom door for the last two years ever since the door handle fell off. <laughs> What do you what do you use to prise open the door? Uh, just my fingernails. <laughs> and I, you have to go to the top of the, the door jam. Is it an out or a no, it's it's all depends which side. <laughs> <laughs> do you live on your own? I can answer that. <laughs> I, 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 sh I have a flatmate, but it's just my bedroom, yeah. It's only you that has the income. So you have to do... I'm, I'm absolutely the only person who ever needs to get in or out. <laughs> <laughs> he speaks to me with a, with a stare, and I don't know... It's just, you know, don't a say look of resignation. <laughs> Why haven't you just whipped out a knob <laughs> and affixed it to the entrance? <laughs> Basically, it wouldn't, it's not really, you can't just screw it back on because the holes that the screws... Uh, the thread's gone. That's it! <laughs> uh, Keely, speaking as the only woman, uh, in your single days before you settled oh, down... Oh, God! And yes. you would, you'd have been you'd met as David and you'd be getting on like a wildfire and he said, well, why don't you come back to my... I know you don't like it. I know you don't like it. It's either this or Ronnie Corbett. Right. Um, why, don't, why don't you come back to my uh, apartment and uh, we could settle down and have a game of Boggle? So... <laughs> so, you, you go there, you go there... And... And he says, well, why don't we go upstairs? And you go upstairs and you get to the door <laughs> and there's no handle <laughs> or knob. Would that put you off? This actually happened to me once. David! <laughs> David! You're a dark horse. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> in the morning to leave, I couldn't get out. Huh? And I didn't know where I was. You didn't know where you were? 
<laughs> wow, really? Well, I had to ring the fire brigade. I, I think I, I had should to say, at this point, this was not at my house. <laughs> Come and put a ladder up to the window and give me a fireman's lift where, out. Where was the man who's how who you'd gone oh, back he'd with? He'd gone to work. He'd gone to work so and locked you in for later. Know. Didn't know. <laughs> She'll keep till I get back. <laughs> wow, wow. Okay, what are you gonna say, Lee? I think it's a lie. Yeah, it's a lie. It looks it's... like a man that's got well maintained doors. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say it's a lie. OK, yeah. then we'll say it's a lie. He's saying it's a lie. David Mitchell, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? It is, in fact, true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. David has had to prise open his bedroom door for the last two years ever since the door handle fell off. I once lost a game of swing ball to a chimpanzee. <laughs> <laughs> David's team. OK, um... Why were you with the chimpanzee? I was visiting a zoo in South Africa and the trick that the chimpanzee could do was play swing ball. And we all took it in turns to have a go and I'd had a few to drink and Chim he beat me. <laughs> what time of day was this? Time of day? Yes, I... Before the monkey's bedtime. <laughs> Are you refusing to answer? I'm not refusing, but I'm thinking about it for a while because right. I don't know if you mean South African time or English time. <laughs> it's very similar, but I think there's an hour's difference. Do you mean the South African time? I mean the South African, the local oh, time. The local yes. time. I believe... Oh, sorry, you've thrown me a bit, because most time I tell people I've... Local I... time <laughs> in the zoo on the occasion of your match I've been using this, I can't lie, over the years I've been using this anecdote at the yeah. darts and things. Oh, did I ever tell you, lads, about the time I played yeah. uh, swing ball with a chimpanzee? No one's ever said, what time of day was this? <laughs> Me for a second, yeah. most people go, chimpanzee swing ball? Tell us more, you interesting person. <laughs> I suppose what's different is that why, when you tell that as an anecdote in the pub, people go, it's polite to go along with the bullshit that Lee talks. <laughs> 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 Why were you in South Africa? Don't, don't tell no, the time of day. The time of day. The time of day. Make I, up a time of day. I, I couldn't beat a chimpanzee at swim ball because ball, I was drunk. How am I going to remember the time of day? Who I was mean, it? I'm remember. terrible at this, and this is only quarter to three. three. <laughs> I'll tell you what, well, we... I fancy a trip round the zoo. <laughs> around about one in the morning, they get the chimp out. <laughs> and the chimp takes people on a swing ball. The chimp loads likes nothing more than a load of pissed contestants. <laughs> yeah, well, we don't all go to the British Museum for stag weekends. <laughs> Zoos aren't open after the pub. <laughs> no, no, we went, we, it was afternoon. You know, we've been drinking since the you'd morning. You had a boozy lunch. We had a Did boozy you? morning. We started at eleven. Arrest me. Right. <laughs> Why didn't you go and see like some strippers? Wouldn't a load of men well, go? We thought, oh, we, we, thought we, we thought we were. We thought we were. Before someone phones the RSPCA, it was a consenting Lyle chimpanzee. Kelly. We're not. It wasn't. I don't think he'd said, "Look, you know, yeah. I quite like it here at the zoo, but really, what would make it peachy is if I could take on some of the uh, visitors, ideally at swing ball, badminton at a push." I don't think that happened. Well, he had no choice. Well, uh, since he had no choice. That's my point. <laughs> right? Is it the truth or is it a lie? I thought it was a lie, right. but it seems the sort of thing he'd do. <laughs> I think it's a lie, but I'm happy to be... Yeah, I'll go, I'll go with a lie. lie. We'll go yeah. with lie. We all say it's a lie. Yeah. yeah. All right. Lee, truth or lie? It is, in fact, a lie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, it is a lie. Uh, Lee has never lost a game of swing ball to a chimpanzee. Uh, for the record, it was Scrabble. <laughs> OK. <clears throat> As a child, I had a special way of communicating with Captain Kirk 
during Star Trek episodes. True. On we go. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon? And that special way was? I had two ways of communicating with Captain Kirk. Uh, one was with a, a little calculator that when you sort of... It had a sort of leatherette case. And when you flipped it open, it was, to my child's eyes, uncannily identical to a Star Trek communicator of the old sort. We're talking pre-nipple punch. <laughs> you do this, David. I know it's no, it's more sort of. <laughs> yeah, no. it would open with it would go, and then it would go, and you press the button, Kirk to Enterprise, and it would go. Oh yes, that's the secondary noise. Did you, just a question? Did you, did you, did you two ever have girlfriends? Yeah. <laughs> No, I didn't, in all honesty. Yeah, As a no. child, did you? No. No. Uh, no. Yeah. It was a great noise, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very comforting. It was, yeah. yeah. That, Are you that kept me company. Uh, Who me. needs people? Exactly. <laughs> and what was, the, what was the second way? The second way was I would sort of converse a bit with the characters on the screen while it was happening. So, Right. Join in, slip in. Oh, that's good thoughts, uh, so Captain you... Kirk. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't interrupt me, Spock. I'm talking. Do you know the characters of the, 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 the famous yes. Star Trek? Yeah. There's Uhuru. What did you say? Uhuru. 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 Uh, yeah. Sulu. 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 Uh, Chekhov. Chekhov. Bones. 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 Yes. But McCoy Bones. actually properly. Rob. Yeah. Rob. Rob. Have you ever refereed anything <laughs> before? <laughs> <laughs> Referee of football. Why, yeah. why don't you try kicking it in the top like that? <laughs> right, what are you going to say then, Lee? Well, what do you think? It's, uh, the bit that rings most true, actually, about all of this was when he went, I flipped it open. Cos I remember those calculators. They used to have a little thing that... There's no uh, doubt, yeah. And did you do the old thing where it spells boobies when you turn it upside down? <laughs> he didn't know what they were. <laughs> OK, so... Uh... <laughs> Is David telling the truth, Lee? What do you reckon? Right, OK. Do we believe uh, David, as a small child, would be so lonely and sad that he would have to use his... I'll tell you that. Okay. Yes, I, yes, we do, yeah. You're saying it's true? <laughs> We're saying it's true. You sure? OK. David. Is it true or is it a lie? I prefer the word imaginative to lonely, but uh, <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. As a child, David did have a special way of communicating with Captain Kirk during Star Trek episodes. Uh, David particularly liked Leonard Nimoy. That odd life form obsessed with logic would tune in each week <laughs> to watch Mr. Spock. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Every year, I mark the anniversary of the death of my goldfish by pouring a shot of brandy into my pond. <laughs> <laughs> did, this, did this tradition predate the death of your goldfish? <laughs> no. No. Did that you was just not the cause of the death. Were there other fish that survived? Uh, yeah, yeah, I've got, a, I've, got, I've got a pond in the garden. Yes. And that, the, the, the pond has nothing to do with the death of the goldfish. But how, it... how many fish were in the pond? Just one? The, 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 I'm not going to say this again, Bernard. <laughs> was the goldfish <laughs> in the pond when it died? No. <laughs> Sorry, oh, the goldfish was not a pond goldfish, it was a bowl goldfish, was it? Or a tank goldfish? It was, no, it was a tree goldfish, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Where did he live? The goldfish lived in a bowl. The goldfish bowl. If the goldfish lived in a bowl... Correct! Why do you commemorate its death Why? by pouring brandy into an alternative goldfish habitat? <laughs> <laughs> because when the goldfish died, the bowl went. Do, do any fish live in the pond? Just... Oh, my God. <laughs> Currently, any fish in the pond, because if you pour brandy into a pond, they're going to die as well. They're going to die as well. So it's a legitimate question. <laughs> there was ne at no point, <laughs> right? Did the, the original fish die due to brandy being no, poured into the pond? No, but now. <laughs> Right. But the amount of brandy that I pour into the pond yes. is like the weakest cordial you could ever drink. Fish, Lee. Fish are drinking all the time. Yes. Not brandy. Not alcohol. Not yes. brandy. brandy if it's in the bloody water. Yes, but it's, but it's then not brandy, is it? Brandy is... Well, it's brandy and water. No, it's not. Diluted is no longer brandy. So you're saying when you put soda in brandy, you'll make it no longer soda brandy. Soda in brandy. Brand <laughs> you put soda in brandy. Brandy yeah. and soda. Yes. What kind of 1970s porn world are you living in? <laughs> <laughs> Do 
just one last question. Why do you commemorate the death of a goldfish? Right. It Stop. doesn't matter, the death of a goldfish. Oh, it Not doesn't matter to you, you bitch. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it does, absolutely doesn't matter to me, but, but I suspect it doesn't matter to you either. Oh, and it doesn't matter to me, but it matters to the wife. The, the wife loved that goldfish like, uh, like a husband. And so, <laughs> so she said, do me a favour, my beloved husband, yeah, show your respect that. for this fish I so loved by she annually loved... pouring yeah. a shot of brandy mm. into the pond of these other fish who I secretly hate and wish to destroy. <laughs> so with that in mind, David, what are you going to say? Bernard. She's a liar. <laughs> Patrick? It's true. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's not. He's a liar. <laughs> You're saying it's a lie? Yes. yes. OK, uh, Lee, is it true what you've just told us, or is it a lie? It's absolutely a lie. <laughs> <laughs>